one of the fundamental risks in investing is volatility in fact many times it is a single most important measure of risk because it is very easy to understand and it's vis- very visible uh, as an investor it is near impossible to eliminate volatility and therefore it is important to understand it and plan your investing strategy accordingly my name is neelab and welcome to this edition of covera insights i'm joined today by chintan harya who heads product development and strategy at icici prudential mutual fund to discuss on what we mean by volatility and what are the various aspects uh, of volatility and how it can impact and help us devise a better investment strategy for ourselves hi chintan thank you so much for joining us today hi it is always a pleasure to connect with all of you and the listeners at covera insights and i think the topics are always unique so that makes it even more interesting thank you great so we we'll quickly jump into uh, our our discussion uh, if you can help us understand uh, for our uh, viewers how do we define volatility and uh, if you can shed some light on volatility in the context of mutual fund investments sure so volatility is a statistical measure and uh, for making it very simple for investors without going into the you know jargonized meaning of uh, what volatility is because then i would say standard deviation then i would say mean the difference between the mean and then trying to find all of that leave it standard deviation for very simple terms means uh, how volatile or how much is the price movement of a stock on a daily basis before it reaches a particular destination so let's say two stocks one reaches or grows by 1% every day and reaches let's say from 100 to 200 the other one may go from 100 to 120 then come down to 110 then go up to 140 then again come down so that will be more volatile because the price movements are up and down and more volatile so it's so the more volatile a stock obviously the more risky it is perceived because while the stock a which went from 100 to 200 in a smooth fashion or was less volatile is easy to digest as an investor and you know typically if a stock does not fall too much you get more comfort and you stay invested in the stock for long run but a stock which is more volatile and moves a lot more obviously scares investors and i think as human beings we are hardwired in terms of our risk averse nature and greed and fear are so ingrained in us that the moment the moment we see a stock getting or coming down from our price or losing out we want to jump away from it so anything which we fear or anything where we feel fear for and fear of losses is the biggest fear let's say 100 rupees gain made by an investor is not equal to the 100 rupees loss in terms of the mental trauma if you lose 100 rupees it will be worth probably 1000 rupees of gain and that's where volatility as a concept is very simple the moment of the stock price is if it is too volatile or if it moves up and down too much while reaching a particular destination in its journey it is perceived to be more risky and that's the simple meaning of volatility uh, for the benefit of investors investing in equity right uh, interesting that you spoke about it in this manner uh, i i want to just brings uh, attention to the fact that you, like you mentioned 100 rupees of loss causes more trauma than the joy that 100 rupees of profit brings uh more importantly these are not realized profits or losses this is something that you know when you log into your account or you are uh, you know sort of uh, logging into a news channel business news channel you're seeing these prices flashing on the screen and you see these ups and downs uh, your mind works in exactly this fashion so it's it's both a psychological uh impact uh that's it uh, that it has on you which also determines uh and plays a role in sometimes in how we you know approach investing uh but we'll come to that in a little bit but uh, i just want to understand from a mutual fund context uh what is the measure of uh volatility is there a number that uh, one can look at and uh, uh how do we how do we you know uh, interpret it sure sure so like i explained in the case of a single stock to make it easier as an example similarly a mutual fund nav or a mutual fund also uh, is a nothing but a combination of let's say 25 30 underlying securities and how their prices move so every day you would find 
the mutual fund in AB moving up or down in relation to the underlying stocks that it has. And this moment or the volatility itself is captured by a term called standard deviation. In other words, how much does the mutual fund NAV move on a day-to-day -day basis relative to its mean? In other words, how much volatile it is? That's what volatility is all about. And the major statistical measure is standard deviation. Typically, if a mutual fund unit has significant or a mutual fund NAV moves significantly away from its means, means it has been too volatile. And that essentially means that the underlying stocks have been too volatile. So if higher the volatility, higher the standard deviation, it is considered as higher risk from an investor standpoint. Lower the standard deviation, lower the uh, volatility, lower the risk from an investor standpoint. But in the case of equity, you should correlate the excess returns and then look at standard deviation. By itself, if you look at the measure and say, Fund A with 16% standard deviation of volatility is better than a fund B which has 18% volatility? No. Fund A with 16% volatility could have given you 20% return. Fund B with 18% volatility can give you 28% return. So then you have to basically look at volatility in context of returns and then figure out whether the extra volatility or standard deviation or risk, is it justified by the extra return that you're making? That's the concept in mutual funds uh, of volatility and you have to always look at it in conjunction with returns. Understood, understood. So uh, just bringing, adding a little more uh, to, to what you said, uh, in the case of mutual fund investments, because it is a basket of in, uh, instruments and it could comprise of multiple stocks um, uh, or multiple securities, the volatility of one uh, instrument, if they are if they are not correlated to each other, volatility of uh, you know two instruments will cancel each other out, resulting in a lower volatility at the mutual fund level or at the uh, mutual fund portfolio level. Uh, now, uh, I want to also understand one more thing you mentioned: standard deviation. So, standard deviation is for a specific period from when you are evaluating mutual fund, is there a specific time period standard deviation or a time period of volatility that one should look at? Uh, and how does it change across different categories? Sure. So uh, typically most investors, and even if you look at regulatory filings which happen or disclosures which happen, they disclose uh, volatility or standard deviation on a one-year basis. So any of the monthly disclosures in the fact sheet, you can see the standard deviations are showcased on a one-year basis, which is a good measure for investors to know that in the last one year, uh, what has been the uh, standard deviation of volatility uh, as given by the fact sheet. Now, I would say that investors should probably also look at over three-year basis in terms of return and reward and risk and then make a choice as far as the investments is concerned. Because one year in terms of investing in equities is a shorter term time period. And hence, look at a three-year, five-year horizon in terms of investments and also in terms of the risk as measured by standard deviation or volatility. And that will be a good way to look at it. So three years, five years is a better measure. One year definitely does give you an indication of the recency, how the recent performance has been and the risk has been. But a three-year, five-year measure is better because it takes into account the market dynamics. Sometimes what happens is the fund manager can be very rational. They can stay away from those stocks which are booming right now and may not be cheap or may be very expensive. A typical example, like 1999 technology sector, if you stayed away from in 2000, you were better off, but in 1999, you would have got hurt. Nine, 2008, if you would have had real estate stocks or infrastructure stocks, you were fine. But by 2008, so 2007, you were fine. 2008, you would have been in a bad shape. So it's not always a good measure that in one year you decide whether a fund is performing well or not. Look at a three-year, five-year history. The longer the history, the better it is. And look at volatility in conjunction with that time period. That will be a good way to look at funds. Thank you.